police emergency. Hello, I've just had a detective on my landline from Hammersmith Police Station in London. He said something about my debit card's been cloned and been used in an Apple store for the value of £400. And they're investigating it. He even knew my postcode. It hasn't. You know that, don't you? It's a, a scam. I don't know. That's why I'm phoning you, because he wanted me to get my debit card and give him the number on the back. Yeah, ne um, never give that, because that's like a security number. So you only give that if you're ordering goods over the phone. So you haven't paid any money over to them at all? No, I've not paid any money or anything. Well, you've done exactly the right thing. Yeah. I'm just standing here shaking and I'm just feeling... Yeah, I bet you are, bless you. Well, we will see if we can get an officer to come to you, all right. I thought we went out for vulnerable people if they're, you know, fraud. Um, somebody's just tried to defraud her out of money. Um, she's out elderly, she says I'm shaking, I'm really upset. She's not lost anything as far as I know. We're but... meant to, just for reassurance, that's what we got told in our briefing yeah. the other day. <laughs> It's late Saturday afternoon, and a concerned son is calling on behalf of his elderly mother. She had a call from a scam firm, and they arranged to come and talk to her about selling her house. My mum's 94, and she's got Alzheimer's. Can I ask how you know this is a, a scam? Yeah, it's a scam. We've looked at the telephone number that's phoned her up, and it says that's what this phone number's about. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get this officer to, to be reviewed and an officer will make a decision how the best way to proceed is. Okay. Yeah, right. Lovely. Thanks for your help. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thank you. PC's Steve Cheatham and Sophie Genet are dispatched to the address. We're going to, to more and more jobs involving elderly people at the minute. There is a, a not a lot standing between them and these con artists, scam artists, whatever you want to call them. Hi, Hello, are we all right? Uh, Ian, is it? Yes, it's Ian, yeah, indeed. Thank you. A sales company calling an elderly person and persuading them, scaring them Hi, into right? buying something they potentially don't need it is a grey area because it's not a criminal offence, but it isn't right, is it? It's taking advantage of an elderly person and that's not right. So last week... Yeah. Um, okay. There was a phone call while Mum's carer was here and they asked for her bank details mm -hmm. and Mum gave them the bank details yep. against the advice of the carer. So that came to me because the carers got in touch with me okay. and phoned up the bank and the arrangements we've made for protecting Mum's money is OK, so Excellent. nothing has gone out. And we believe an appointment's been made on Tuesday? Yeah, appointment's been made Tuesday 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And do we, do we know what the appointment is for? Well, what Mum has got down in her diary, she managed to keep a diary despite her problems with Alzheimer's. Yep. That's the way in which she tracks herself. In her diary, it says, Paul coming at four o'clock about selling the house. Okay. So I'm assuming it's about people who try to convince old people yep. that they should sell their house in order to support their caring. To get the equity out of it, yeah. These scammers are operating in a way to scare these elderly people into parting with their money. I think with the generation of elderly people we have at the minute that aren't as comfortable with the internet or modern technology, there are people out there that will take advantage of that. Oh, you've got lovely handwriting. <laughs> Reselling house. There'd be absolutely no motivation for her to sell her house to anybody who came to the door. Everything is lodged in here are memories of family, memories of my dad. All the stuff that she's gathered is here. A couple of years ago, she got really badly scammed when yeah. someone actually took her to the cash till yeah. and made her draw some oh. money out. She just finds it difficult. If somebody comes to the door, she'll mm. believe she has to talk to them. Yeah. At the minute, no criminal offences are taking place, but we'll certainly have an officer in the area around that time, just in case. OK. Right, we'll leave you to your evening, then. Uh, thanks very much. OK. Take care, Heather. No problem. Bye-bye. There's more scammers out there now than there ever has been because there's more people needing money. We're so driven by money over our morals. It's, it's terrible to think like that. Call it the lowest of the low if you like. I'm sure there are people that are lower, but not much. I just think it's really wicked. <laughs> <laughs>
basically. But it did make me worry that the person was going to come back and they could actually get her to sign over the house in some sort of way. I didn't really think they could. If I, in, right deep inside me, I couldn't work out what the mechanism might be, but it doesn't stop you worrying about it. But he didn't turn up. Poor lady. Yeah, bless her. To be fair, he seems. They've got a good setup. He seems for very her, switched though. on. Yeah. So they've they've got they've done a lot of safeguarding I, themselves already. Yeah. I can safely say, out with in six years of doing this job with these sort of scamming crimes on elderly people, I don't think I've caught one offender because we just haven't had the evidence, we haven't had the intelligence, um, or we've not known about it until it's far too late and the money's already gone. Have you ever been scammed? <laughs> no, I haven't. I mean, there have been attempts, and I've been close a couple of times, but I've never got to the point where I've been caught. Not yet.